Greetings tech and gaming fans, Edge Runners is back with the latest updates you don't want to miss. In today's episode, Nvidia's rumored RTX 5090 Ti details, Intel's BIOS enhancements, and new insights into Rebel Wolves' upcoming RPG and RDNA 4 GPUs. In addition, we take a look at new action RPG by Cruelman Studio, and more. Prepare a cup of your favorite tea, settle in, and let's kick things off. First up, Intel recently promised to release a BIOS update for the Core Ultra 200S series aiming to boost gaming performance by about 17.5%. The update has been tested by Tom's hardware using a Core Ultra 285K processor, Windows 11 and the latest firmware tested across 13 modern games at full HD resolution. The results were compared with the performance of the same Core Ultra 285K with its initial BIOS version as well as Intel's Core 14900K and AMD's Ryzen 9 800X3 both of which were fully tested in all the games due to recent performance optimizations. Despite the claimed improvements, the fresh BIOS update had minimal impact on gaming performance for the Core Ultra 285K. Tom's hardware found the difference between old and new firmware to be negligible, with the Core Ultra 285K still significantly trailing behind its main competitors. Meanwhile, Windows updates and game patches had a much greater impact on the performance of the Core 14900K, boosting its gaming performance by nearly 7%. As a as a result, the performance gap between Intel's Raptor Lake Refresh and Arrow Lake flagships widened to 14%, up from 6.4% at launch. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 9 800X 3D outperforms the Core Ultra 285K by a solid 40%. How do you feel about the performance of Intel's Core Ultra CPUs compared to the competition? Share your thoughts in the comments. In January, Nvidia introduced the RTX 5090, but it might not remain the most powerful card in the RTX 50 series. Reports suggest that Nvidia is working on an upgraded version, possibly called the RTX 5090 Ti. A user on Chipel shared an image of an unannounced Nvidia GPU featuring the GB202A1 chip. This GPU reportedly has 24,576 CUDA cores and a clock speed of 2,514 MHz compared to the RTX 5090's 21,760 CUDA cores and 2,407 megahertz boost clock. The card is said to feature 32 gigabytes of memory running at 32 gigabits per second, offering a memory bandwidth of over two terabytes per second, higher than the RTX 5090's 28 gigabits per second memory. The TDP is reported at 800 watts, 225 watts more than the RTX 5090, and it requires two power connectors. Currently, the card lacks driver support, so performance testing isn't possible, and the final product name is still unconfirmed. The Rebel Wolves studio, founded by former CD Projekt Red developers, has provided further details about their upcoming RPG, The Blood of Dawnwalker. This RPG will feature a protagonist capable of forming romantic relationships, similar to The Witcher 3. However, specific characters involved and the impact of these relationships on the storyline have not yet been disclosed. Additionally, the magic system in The Blood of Dawnwalker will differ from traditional fantasy RPGs. The game will feature rare, dark, and occult magic, focusing on rituals, protective amulets, and mind manipulation, rather than flashy fire and lightning spells. The RPG will follow a non-linear narrative, offering multiple endings. It is set to release on PC, PS5, and Xbox series. Do you think a non-linear narrative and multiple endings will add replay value to the blood of Dawnwalker? Share your thoughts in the comments. Nvidia's cloud gaming service GeForce Now is currently unavailable for most subscription tiers, according to reports from Computerbase and Tom's Hardware. The issue isn't due to technical problems but rather high demand, which has made it impossible for new users to subscribe. GeForce Now offers three main subscription tiers, Free, Performance and Ultimate. The latter two can be purchased for one or six months. Additionally, there are day passes for those who only need a few hours of access per day, making monthly subscriptions unnecessary. At the moment, nearly all subscription tiers are listed as sold out across most countries. Nvidia has stated that new subscriptions are being limited to ensure a smooth experience for existing users. Currently, GeForce Now servers are running at full capacity. Tom's Hardware notes that a similar situation occurred in 2020, and Nvidia is expected to resolve the issue in the near future. AMD has officially announced the launch window for its next-generation RDNA 4 graphics cards. David McAfee, Vice President and General Manager of AMD's Ryzen CPU and Radeon graphics divisions, shared the news in a post revealing that Radeon RX 9000 series GPUs will hit store shelves in March of this year. This timeline contradicts earlier rumors and leaks suggesting a January launch. According to video cards, AMD may have adjusted the release date in response to Nvidia's plan to launch the GeForce RTX 5070 in February. By pushing 
the Radeon RX 9070 launch to March, AMD has more time to finalize positioning and optimize pricing for the new GPUs. How do you think AMD's RDNA 4 will stack up against Nvidia's RTX 50 series? Share your thoughts in the comments. At CES 2025, ID Software revealed new details about their upcoming shooter, Doom the Dark Ages, in an interview with Tweaktown. The game will fully utilize NVIDIA's latest technologies, including ray tracing and path tracing, but not just for visual upgrades. Developers explained that ray tracing will play a key role in gameplay, enabling precise hit detection. According to ID Tech's technology director Billy Khan, ray tracing can distinguish between materials like skin, metal, or fur on a per-pixel basis, allowing for unparalleled accuracy in interactions and combat. However, this reliance on ray tracing may limit the game's compatibility with GPUs that lack hardware-based RT support. MSI has officially announced that its custom versions of GeForce RTX 50 series graphics cards will include power adapters with color-coded connectors. These connectors are designed to prevent issues with melting power ports caused by improperly inserted cables. A yellow section will remain visible until the power cable is fully and securely inserted, ensuring a proper connection. This solution has previously been used by some PSU manufacturers to address similar issues with GeForce RTX 4090 connectors. The new adapters will be included with the GeForce RTX 5070 RTX 5080, and RTX 5090, while the more affordable RTX 5070 will ship with a standard black connector. Additionally, the flagship NVIDIA Blackwell GPU will come with an adapter featuring four 8-pin connectors, while the RTX 5070 Ti and RTX 5080 models will include adapters with three 8-pin connectors. Do you think MSI's color-coded connectors will solve the issue of melting power ports? Share your thoughts in the comments. NVIDIA's latest DLSS 4 technology with multi-frame generation has already caught attention ahead of the launch of Blackwell GPUs. NVIDIA claims it can boost performance in demanding games by up to eight times while delivering better image quality compared to DLSS 3. Surprisingly, DLSS 4 may also work on older GeForce RTX 30 GPUs. In an interview with Digital Foundry, NVIDIA's Vice President of Machine Learning Research Brian Catanzaro explained the shift in approach. Unlike DLSS 3, which relied on the optical flow algorithm optimized for RTX 40 hardware, DLSS 4 removes this dependency. Frame generation now utilizes tensor cores and AI exclusively, reducing memory requirements and making it technically feasible for RTX 30 GPUs. Catanzaro emphasized that while DLSS 4 demands powerful tensor cores, Nvidia sees potential for implementation on older GPUs with further optimization. However, performance will still lag compared to the latest hardware. Reliable insider Tomasz Gawronski has shared new pricing details for AMD's upcoming Radeon RX 9000 series GPUs, citing information from the Chipel forum. According to Gawronski, the rumored $479 price tag for the Radeon RX 9070 XT is inaccurate. Even the base Radeon RX 9070 will reportedly cost more, with a suggested retail price of $499. Meanwhile, the Radeon RX 9070 XT will be priced at $599. The Radeon RX 9000 series is set to debut soon, though reports suggest AMD delayed the launch and price reveal due to Nvidia's competitive pricing for some GeForce RTX 50 series cards, which surprised AMD and forced a strategic adjustment. Would you pay $599 for the Radeon RX 9070 XT, or does it seem overpriced? Let us know in the comments. Studio S Game has released a new trailer for its AAA title Phantom Blade Zero in celebration of the Year of the Snake. The video showcases the stunning world built with Unreal Engine 5, snake-inspired weapons, and an intense boss battle. The game features fast-paced, dynamic combat with numerous combos, leaving no room for error. Death comes almost instantly to the protagonist. Players will take on the role of Soul, an assassin framed for the murder of a high-ranking member of the Order. Based on the trailer, the developers appear to have drawn inspiration from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Following the massive success of Black Myth Wukong, investors have increased the budget for Phantom Blade Zero. The game is scheduled for release next year, though no exact date has been announced yet. It will be a console exclusive for the Sony PlayStation 5, but will also launch on PC. Thanks for watching our latest gaming and tech roundup. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on our latest updates. How do you feel about the performance of Intel's core Ultra CPUs compared to the competition? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.